Hello and welcome to this new video today. I will show you today how to draw a beautiful, colorful, brilliant background for a kingfisher. If you're interested to draw this kingfisher portrait, it's a drawing lesson inside of my membership Animal Art Club. In Animal Art Club, I teach my students how to learn how to draw realistic animal portraits with puzzles. I invite you to join the waitlist in the link below in the description to be informed first when the doors will open again. And now let's start with the background for the Kingfisher. Here we have this portrait of the Kingfisher and I will do now a background. So let's add a background if you would like to. Let's um, do it with some soft pastel sticks if you have one or use some other pastels you have. You can use pen pastels for example if you have one or you can use the soft pastels like Rembrandt or unison color or use i have here a cheaper version too it, ha it these are called yaxel so they have a very good price um, performance ratio or you can use hard pastels of faber castell or use if you don't have soft pastels or something like that if you only have pencils at the moment, then do the background with pencils, with Carbotellos, with Derwent's, with the pits. You can really um, try something out and practice and experiment a little bit here. So I don't give you exactly colors. I would encourage you to choose colors for by yourself and play a bit around. So... I will have an orientation on the reference photo. Um, you can also do something completely different. That's no problem. So I will go with that to add here some orangey pinks on top, then in the middle ye yellows, then greens and brighten them up a bit with white or something like that. So uh, the first step is that I choose such an flesh color and orangey brown and just um, plot that in here on top a bit so it's a very bright color and this um, is uh, a, not a, a directly soft pastel it's more a hard pastel these square pastels where you can also draw a bit with the edges but it's um, softer than the pencils are and so just uh, bring in pastel pigment here on top and then most times I go over with the finger and push this pigment. You see there is lots of pastel pigment on the paper when you are drawing backgrounds with the softer pastel sticks. When you're working with pencils there um, you don't have so much pastel dust on your paper. So I blend this first layer and push all the pigments here into the paper. Going over with the finger. And then I also blow some loose pigments away. So drawing backgrounds can be a little bit dusty. So be prepared. Then here um, I add another layer. Be careful when you... Uh, draw here nearly your your birds so that you don't draw over the feathers going here around with the the sharper points here of the pastel stick while I was mapping in the pigments there is this um, tip has appeared and so I use that for applying the pigment here Going here over with the finger again. Yes, and then the next step is to bring in another color. I use here a bit of yellow then. So plot in a yellow you have in your 
range at home. So uh, use the colors you have. Just plot in here a bit of a yellow. I will mix that then with different other colors. So when you are drawing backgrounds, you can really experiment a bit. Experiment with colors, blend them together. So I would also bring in here a lighter orangey pink. So I would say a saffron or something like that. Just map that in here over the two layers so you can see a lot of pigment is, a, is here on the paper. And then push that pigment into uh, the pastel matte paper, the paper you have. So you can see here there is lots of pastel dust on the surface. And you see I push nearly most of the pigment into the paper. So pastel matte is amazing in this case. It, um, yeah, all the pigment sticks into the paper. So it really allows lots of layers. But here in this case, when you um, create backgrounds, you see you have lots of pigment in there. And it would be, um, you, if you would like to draw here over these layers, uh, the strokes will start to smear and smudge. And so here it doesn't matter because it's only one or two layers. We are blending them together. So it doesn't matter if if there is a lot of pigment on the paper for later layers because there are no later layers and so they, the color, there is a lot of pigment on the paper and the colors are very brilliant and, and opaque. So blend this with your finger or with, with some sponges. So um, pan pastels have such sponges you can use these little things here, or these little applicators. You get them with the pen pastels. You can see here so such sponges too. These are uh, useful too if you won't use the finger. Then just go over it with these sponges and and blend the layers together with these. But you see, it's not working so well like with the fingers. You um, the surface is becoming rougher. So I have perhaps for these sponges I have applied too much pigment now. They work better with pan pastels and um, thinner layers. But here you can see um, the finger works better to make it smooth. You can use it with a paper tissue and, and blend the layers or with so little. You can try it with cotton swabs too. So go over it with cotton swabs. That works works a bit too. But always I make this surface rougher. I, I remove with these tools the pigment. You can see it here. This uh, that works better when I want to remove the pigment and and um, so that I can draw over it then afterwards. The finger works best. I also have a free gift for you. It's my beginner's guide. You can also find the link to grab this beginner's guide below in the description. If you are just starting out, then grab it. I have a lot of information in this PDF. It's free. Okay, then let's add another layer. Let's uh, bring in a bit of white too. So I, this is Schminke, a very, very soft white. I go over it here. And so with the longer side of the, of the sticks, you can here apply very quickly a big area and add here a bit of white. And the amazing thing is really these um, colors, you can blend very well, you can mix them. So you see, I mix here white with the yellow and the orangey color and mix them. And then mm, you create such beautiful transitions that looks always good in backgrounds. Brighten up that part. 
going over with the finger and mix in colors. You can also add another layer with white then. Just brighten up this part a bit. So I go over it once more with white here and blend and mix it here with, with the, the other layers and bring in here a bit of a more brilliant white area here. So play a little bit around what looks good. Here below let's add a bit of white too and then blend it with the yellow. Let's brighten up here the yellow. When it I come nearly near to the bird then I use um, I use such a cotton swab because um, then the finger is too too broad and I have I don't want to to swipe over my bird. So using the cotton swab and blend this paper pigment really near to the beak here. That really works well. So I go over in little circles and and bring in here the pigment near to the bird, blow away some pigments. It can happen that you have a bit of the pigment over your portrait, of course. Uh, finally, then we will correct the bird and add some edges or remove some pigment that that's then over our bird at the end. So here I'm going over too and mix here the layers a bit, go over with the cotton swab. I don't work with blending stamps for backgrounds, for smooth backgrounds, because they will make strokes. I can demonstrate it to you. So let's use a clean one. So when you go over with a paper stamp and try to blend it, you always will remove a lot of pigment and and uh, you have then to blow it away and you will get so little uh, marks and strokes. It can work when you want here to, to make these edges along really straight around the, the bird. But then, so you can go uh, around the bird with the paper stamp, but you see you will you will get here so strokes because you you make the the all the pigment then you you make it rougher and all the powder is um, becoming loose then. So I would say use batteries to use a cotton swab and smooth it down again and bring the pigment into the paper. So you see here the finger always works best. You can smooth the background really well with the finger. Here above I go over with the thumb and, and make it smooth once more. So. I don't want that these marks are visible here. Okay, so I prefer to have a really smooth background. So cotton swabs work better and the finger. Okay, then let's um, draw here the middle part in some greens. So. I choose an olive green for example, if you have one or use the olive green out of your pencil. So here I map in a bit of this olive green of the heart pastels. Just go over and apply a bit of the green color. So you can really work here quickly and add lots of pigment. The same here on the left side. Again, be careful when you come near the bird. There, then work slower. Okay, then first step is to bring the pigments into the paper again. Blend over with the finger push the pigments into the paper and then we mix it here with our 
yellow above here and we will then add more yellow and more white so at the transitions you always have to to mix them to let them fade and going into each other so that we have here then these smooth transitions then let's add I would say a bit more of yellow here so here it can be more yellowish and then I go over with the finger and mix these layers so you have a little bit to play around how your colors react and it can be really funny to draw background so here I create to to to, uh, to achieve this smooth transition so bring in a bit of a orangey apricot skin color here bringing in different shades also let's brighten up this part here once more a bit with the white I had it lighter here before I go over here with a layer of schminke white it's a very very soft white it works really well then to blend the layers and brighten up the layers if you have another brand of um, for the white then it may happen that you have to go over it once more of course you can use your pencils too if you would like and I will show it to you a bit so if you would like to to bring in green with a pencil I have here the pit of course you can draw backgrounds with pencils too I have here a dark green but uh, it it lasts a little bit longer and you need um, lots of your pencils and you have to go over it more often so here that uh, this layer is opaque that I want to achieve when I draw these backgrounds I have to go over the same same time for for uh, so more often and then of course you can blend them too and mix in the, the pastel pigment from the the pencils so if you would like to add a color you only have in your pencils or if you prefer to draw the whole the whole background with pencils why not that's possible but the bigger the portrait the more the more pencil uh, pigment you would need so go over it again with another color with the aquoise blue uh, earth green is this one and then blend the layers so of course you can work with your pencils and create backgrounds too I will bring in here another layer with with a soft pastel stick here once more it's a lighter green here below I just try some colors out how they work so let's do this whole part here below with a very light green I really use some brilliant colors here most times your soft pastel sticks have the, the more brilliant and colorful color shades in, in the, the set. So go over here and you see how quickly you can work with these sticks and how long you have to work with pencils. Pencils are amazing for details but for bigger areas I can highly recommend to invest in some sticks too. For the beginning and for practicing you can buy the cheaper versions of course for creating backgrounds and painting a little bit. Of course you can uh, just buy a cheaper version you don't have to to use unison color very high quality pastel sticks or the the schminke or the pan pastels pan pastels also are more expensive but they last a little bit longer because there is lots of pigment in these little pans but you can also try some cheaper ones for creating backgrounds you don't have to draw over it very often so here a first layer of green so I just play around a bit with the colors and let them go into each other so here always I always move the finger in circles over it 
then let's add here a bit of white in the middle i want to brighten up that green bringing in here white a bit so i have added lots of schminke white and go over it then and mix in this white brighten up the green so these pastel pigments really uh, beautiful to mix so here you can create these beautiful faded transitions let the colors here fade going into each other then let's add here a bit uh, once more some of the dark green I'm using the pencil here once more I like this dark green if I don't have this same color in the, the sticks Use a bit pencil between and then go over with the finger and blend this dark green color. Tr um, yes, experiment how they react. I think such a background, such a blurry background. It should be really a little bit um, a sort of intuition too and you don't have to to copy something exactly and it um, yes I think it's better to create some for your own you can use these colors or have an orientation on a reference photo but I think it wouldn't work to copy it exactly it depends on your colors you have and I also don't want to to think here a lot about co color choice and pick out the very the very same color I just do it a little bit by my thoughts and and by feelings and create a background that could look beautiful so I think that's very colorful here but it matches to our kingfisher and we can always bring in here some white and brighten it up a bit or something like that or bring in here below too a bit of the skin color and blend it a bit and bringing in some different colors again here more of the olive color here it looks a bit like these are trees in the background or something with leaf so go over and add here a bit with the the, the olive green bringing in here a bit of olive green or a bit of, of yellow too here mapping in a bit of yellow and go over with the finger again blend it again so then the same let's do the same on the left side here I would say I also I choose the green here too I draw with my left hand that you see it better so otherwise I always have my right hand here under the camera and you can't see anything so I draw here a little bit with my left hand it's a little bit more difficult of course but it's also practicing drawing with the left hand so it's funny <laughs> it's funny for me and it works you can train that too from time to time to draw a bit with your left hand it trains your brain okay then also blend this part going over with the finger and blend it going over here blend the green be careful near uh, your portrait I always um, do it this way that I first create the portrait and do backgrounds then finally I know many artists that do it the other way around of course it's possible both and just do it what you prefer how you feel the best so my reason why I do backgrounds always after the portrait is um, so I won't smear all the time with the hands over the background of you can you can put a piece of paper here on this part but I always would lay my hand down on the paper when I'm drawing the bird and then I would always have here all the dust on it or um, yes you all have to be very careful then and always lay a paper between your hand and your drawing 
then it works. I know um, many artists do first the background and then build up the portrait. It's totally up to you. But I, I most times do the, the background then as the final step. Here I bring in a bit of the white. Bring in here a whiter, a whiter stain and blend it again with the finger. It's really possible to, to blend it well. I have here another white so you can compare it a bit. So here this is the very soft schminke. It really smears when I go over it. Lots of white um, pigment is then on the, the drawing. And this is harder, you see, it really is not so white. It starts mixing with the green pigments immediately because that's a hard pastel and it's not so soft. There is more binder in there and uh, between the pastel pigments. And of course that works too. Or if you use a white pit, for example, of course, that works too to brighten up, but not so uh, well as it works with the Schminke. I think unison color would be the same. You can use pencils and other whites, of course. The most um, brilliant white is for me the Schminke and uh, it's you can blend it here more with the layers around and uh, here Below that layer it works best and it, you can brighten the colors up the best way. Here then let's work a bit and refine it a bit. So here I would darken down it now. I have too much white here. I just wanted to demonstrate that to you but I prefer that here is more of the dark green, so I add with the dark green pencil here that I used before in so little circles a bit of pigment and then bringing that in, mixing that in here. Always go over the background here in so little circles and blend the layers. Don't use too much pressure here, just go over it he here in so circles with low pressure. Okay, perhaps I add here a bit of the orangey that I have used a puff. Very low pressure, the same perhaps here too in the left corner here below. And then use a, a cotton swab and just go here near the wood. So I have to blend this green pigments here near to our drawing too. I don't want to have here the paper visible. Blend it here with the cotton swab. And finally we have then to go over our portrait and and just draw some hairs or details, so in this case feather, feather parts or details over the background. Here too, blend here over this, this edges along our drawing. Then I refine these transitions here with the finger. Okay. Going over gently again in little circles, blow away loose pigment and blend it here once more with low pressure. If there is too much pigment I blow it away a bit. Here we can also blend the yellow a bit downwards. So bring in more yellows here below. And blend this or blend the green a bit more downwards here, the olive green and the dark green. So go over it here and blend these areas. 
Okay, great. And then finally, I would say let's go over the edges a bit with um, a pencil again. So let's see if we have to correct something. Let's start with the beak and a sharp black. So here I have brought a bit of the pigment over the beak. I go here over the edges with the black pencil and correct that a bit so that I have a straight line again and that there is no yellow over the beak. Yes, and also here with the sharp pencil you can get, go over the head of the kingfisher and add some hairs going over the background then. So most times you have to, to refine here these edges then bringing in some overlapping feather parts. Yes, and go over it here and add some little details, some strokes that they're overlapping the background, for example, here. Just that you have here straight, straight edges and that your background is not, not over your portrait, over your drawing. So you can go here. Here we could go over with the white a bit and add so white fluffy, fluffy little feathers that are going over the green. Or here too, going over with the white a bit and refine that blue feather here. Here you have to take some time then finally and just Make sure that your background is not destroying here your drawing. Go over the edges, add loose fine details. Oh yeah, here this one little part between the foot and the wood and the body here I have to, to add green here. I have forgotten that so it's always good to go over and correct something. So of course you have to add here green between two. And that little part you can blend with a paper stamp because it's so small. That works best, best with a paper stamp then. Okay. Yes. I think that's good so far. Have we to go over this part here at the belly too. I think I was very carefully here didn't uh, go over this part of the bird so if you work carefully with your background colors you don't have to correct much then you finally otherwise go over the edges and create sharp lines again yes great so I have created here a very colorful background to this colorful bird. You can of course soften it a bit. Use not so brilliant shining colors. Use some lighter, use some creams or something like that. Use every colors you prefer and try something out. I really encourage, encourage you to make an experiment to to. Try to yes to practice a bit to mix colors and uh, let it be fun and play around a little bit it should be funny and a little not so not drawing so many details it it should be a little bit yes more more relaxed relaxing I would say okay finally I add my signature new I have overdrawn it I add my name you can see there is lots of pigment on it. If I go over that here with the pencil, pastel pigment is appearing. Um, yes, and um, I won't uh, spray or use a fixative spray here for the finishing. I would not recommend it because when you spray this um, background, uh, 
drawing, painting, whatever now, there you will be so it would um, become gritty. I have tr uh, tried that out. I've used a spray and then the first th thing is all the brilliant colors here. They darken down and then these white uh, areas become so little dots and little stains and it l doesn't look so smooth anymore. It becomes gritty. When the fixative spray then dry is dry, the colors become a little bit more brighter but not as so brilliant as they were before. You have then a possibility to go over it again and, and blend them a bit because they are not totally fixed. But um, I made the experience that then I had so little dots and stains on it. So I wouldn't recommend it if you handle your portrait with care. If you just um, pick it up here at the edges. So I have... Um, I have tapes here on the back side, but uh, I always just hold here the portrait on the sides, nothing can happen. You can put it behind a, a mount or you can, yes, you can then frame it between glass or uh, store it in your uh, carpet or something like that. So um, I wouldn't fix it with a fixative spray. Just handle it with care and mount it and frame it and nothing can happen. Okay, so that was a demonstration of doing a colorful background. I think this colorful background is beautiful here to our colorful bird. Of course, you can also leave the paper as you have it drawn. You don't have to add a background. It's just for, for uh, um, a sort of inspiration. Okay, so I wish you lots of fun doing a background and show us then your colorful backgrounds. I'm looking forward to them. Wish you lots of fun and enjoy it. So I hope you liked this demonstration of how to draw a colorful, brilliant background to this Kingfisher portrait. If you're interested in drawing the Kingfisher, it's a lesson inside of my membership Animal Art Club. You can find the link to the waitlist below in the description to be informed when the doors will open again. I would love to welcome you in my membership Animal Art Club. If you like my channel, then click subscribe and then I hope I see you soon here in the next video. Have a great and creative time. Bye!